This is Mike, Uncle Mike from Clearview's F350. This truck came to us for a liquid spring build, as in liquid spring suspension, because the truck was wandering all over the place. We've got Mike's truck in, we've got it up on the hoist, we've taken his full tray and camper setup off the vehicle because we have to access everything in the back to be able to rip out all the old leaf springs and put in liquid spring suspension. It's not a quick five minute job, it's about 40 man hours if it was a stock vehicle. There's Mike's tray over there with a the rear winch and all sorts of other gizmology that had to come off so we could then access the chassis rail to drill and bolt and put together the fitting kit that's required for liquid spring. Because you take out a leaf spring which used to go from here to here and then you put in all this five link stuff that makes it fully articulated and drive like it's on liquid. This truck has all, a whole bunch of pre-existing cabling, dual battery wiring, it's got compressor stuff, auxiliary fuel tank stuff that has to be taken out and modified as in adapted to suit the liquid string bracketry as well as dropping the fuel tank to then get access for these brackets and the sensors and then the fuel tank had to be modified to go back in. So it's not just a off the shelf fitting, you can't fit this kit without doing significant changes to the truck. That's what we do all in house. We've got a team of electricians, team of mechanics, teams of good quality fitters as well. There's a reservoir that has the silicon based fluid in there, which goes through to the pump, controlled by an ECU. Everything is controlled by electronicals. There's a nice big towel hanging off the exhaust. Down here, are the little sensors or the height sensors that tell the system when it's going around a corner it tells it how much pressure's on the strut and the system communicates via electrical signals to the ECU back to each strut back to each accumulator to a display that's in the dash. The dash display can either go in the sunglass holder up high or we've got a couple of different unique mounting positions that we've developed at Ultimate Off-Road. This is Dave one of our Alecos who's the magician who throws all that cable very delicately into these trucks to make them operate as they're supposed to. So Dave, where do you start? Basically we start with the ECU, which is the brains of the whole operation. It controls your ride height and everything via some sensors which are mounted on each corner. So that's these little guys down here. Down the side there. So you've got to run cabling to every single one. To every single one and inside the cabin as well. Yep. What's in the cabin? Uh, inside the cabin we've got a screen which controls um, your height up and down as well, so you can control everything from in, inside the cabin. And Bluetooth. Do you find that the harnesses, even though they're pre-made, is there much modification you've got to do to them? Um, no, there's not much modification. It actually taps into the OE harness inside the car, so it's pretty easy to right. install. And what um, sensors do you know is it picking up from the vehicle? So you've got a speed sensor, a um, ignition tap and... Brake sensor? And brake brakes sensor as well, yeah. So speed, brake, there's also a sensor or a... Um, a mechanism that goes on one of the steering arms to give it an uh, angle sensor, sorry, steering angle sensor. And there's inertia modules inside that ECU that gives it brake and cornering readings. What's one of the biggest challenges you have on these trucks? I'm just trying to hide the wiring. <laughs> Make it look factory. Make it look standard, yeah. Yeah, done a good job on this one, apart from all this crap. <laughs> I'm joking, sorry, take that back. <laughs> that, that was all pre-existing. <laughs> that was all pre-existing. That diff is a Banks diff cover. What that does, Ford, in their glorious wisdom, decided to put a diff cover on the back of the diffs that do not have a drain plug or a side class. So what we've done is we've replaced that rear diff cover with the Banks rear diff cover. It increases the flow and cools the fluid down. It also has a side glass so people can see how much fluid's in there and the quality of it, and a drain plug, which is more important. Otherwise, you've got to take the entire cover off the rear diff just to inspect the diff oil. It's a bit counterproductive. There's a rear winch that was in Mike's car, had to come out. We've got to modify that cradle with a bit of plasma cutting. We'll do that later. And then that tray goes back onto that car and then we drive it away and do skids. That is a factory diff cover there, this little disgusting thing, which will be taken off and then a Banks diff cover will go on there. One of our standard sort of upgrades for F trucks. Another upgrade we've got to do to these trucks, well, whilst we're doing the install of the liquid spring suspension into the trucks, it's much easier to gain access to all the bracketry if we remove the fuel tank. When we take the fuel tank out, we like to upgrade it with a better fuel tank. So this truck had a brand of tank that is not suitable for use with liquid spring, and that truck had another type of tank, steel tank, that needed to have significant modifications to make it work with the liquid spring bracketry. So we do all that in-house, or we sort it out in-house. The S&B tanks are a 210 litre fuel tank. We also recalibrate the distance to empty inside the car, so when you get in, when you pick up your truck, the distance to empty is gonna match exactly what is in that tank. It's not gonna be the old style tank of 100 and something litres. It's now 210. G'day. Hello, Ben. Hello. This is a Brown Davis fuel tank that was in Mike's truck. Why is it here? It is here because we've had to modify the tank. OEM ones fit, but certain long range tanks don't fit with their heavy duty brackets involved. So over here, this used to come out this way. 
Now we've had to modify it, make it shorter so the heavy duty brackets can work around it and make it fit. The main part that was fouling on this tank was the centre center trailing arm that goes up the guts of the truck, which is unique to the four or five link rear end on the liquid spring suspension. So if Brown Davis hadn't have helped us, we would have had to go for a different aftermarket tank. But this way we've kept the great Australian brand fuel tank in the truck. What about the other tanks, Nathan? Let's go have a look. The SMBs, all right. So this is an SMB fuel tank, which if we can't utilize a Australian made tank, we go for the SMB tank. Why do you like SMB? SMB, they're big 66 gallon tank. They fit straight in, OEM replacement, and they don't interfere with the brackets, which is a huge win for us. And it's American gear, American truck, works well. For those who live in metric speak, that's 210 litres of fuel for your guzzling beast of a yank tank. So Angelo has come with his white F250, not only just to get liquid spring, but he got a, or he's already had a front runner roof rack installed, a bunch of wiring, a diff breather kit, and some massive 37 inch Nitto tires wrapped around methods because he's getting a six ton GVM upgrade as part of his liquid spring package. It's getting a train canopy fitted as well, but that's not for another six months or so. So the tub is gonna to have to go back on. That's the beauty of liquid spring is he can drive it with a tray or with a tub and it's gonna drive perfectly smooth. One thing that Liquid Springs developed just recently, and this is one of the first kits in Australia to have it, is the nitrogen pre-charge canisters in addition to the silicon. What that gives is a bit of a preload on that silicon fluid, which means that on an unloaded vehicle, so a truck that doesn't have a huge amount of weight on it, the nitrogen gives that system a bit more of a smoother feel on the little bumps. One, one issue that people were having was around the corners on the big bumps and the big whoop de doos The truck would handle beautifully, but the smaller bumps were giving people the irrits. And that's where the nitrogen pre-charge is a development, like a V2 hybrid kit that Liquid Springs made, which allow the nitrogen to go into these canisters at a certain charge to give that preload a bit more of a different feel. So we're doing that today. If you've got any comments about Liquid Spring or any questions about the process to build one of these trucks or to build this in a specific vehicle, give us a comment or send us an email, give us a call and we can answer all those questions for you.